Jai Radha Madhava Jai Kunda Bihari Kopi Dana Bhagava Grivadari Jaya Grivadari Kopi Dana Balaba Grivadari Jaya Grivadari Kopi Dana Balaba Grivadari Jaya Grivadari Kopi Dana Balaba Grivadari Jaya Grivadari Yes, so Dananana Raja Dananana Jaya Raja Dananana Yes, so Dananana Raja Dhanarandana Jaya Raja Dhanarandana Yamu Nadira Varachari Jaya Kunja Bihari Yamu Nadira Varachari Jaya Kunja Bihari Yamu Nadira Varachari Jaya Kunja Bihari Jaya 
Radharamadhava Kayakundha Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Jaya Kunja Vihari Jaya Radha Madhava Jaya Kunja Vihari Jaya Griva Dari Kopi Dana Balaba Griva Dari I agree, Varadari. Yes, Jaya Brada Dana Randana Yes, Jaya Brada Dana Randana Yamuna Dira Varachari Jaya Kunja Bihari Yamuna Dira Varachari Jaya Kunja Bihari Yamuna Dira Varachari Jaya Kunja Bihari Radha Madhava Jaya Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Jaya Kunja Bihari Vishnupad, Brahmahang, Subhavadak, Charya, Asadhara, Sidhu, Shri, Shriman, His Divine Grace, Khalesi, Bhaktivedanta, Samaraj, Srila Prabhupada, Kijai, Gaur Premanande, Haribo, Slava Zabrani Bhaktam, Slava Shri Guru, Shri Gurangi, Mom Vishnu Braya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutte, Shri Mate, Bhaktivedanta, Swami Tanamane, Namaste, Saraswatam Deve, Gaur Vani Vajarne, Nirvishe Shah, Srinivadi, Paskyatyade, Siddharne, Om Agana Timanandas Yagananjana Salakaya Taksur Militam Yena 
Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadamayam Tadati Swapadanti Kam Pandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Parakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Scha Shri Rupam Sagradatam Sahagana Raganatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sarvaitam Sabadutam Prajana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Visakhan Vitam Scha He Krishna Karna Sindo Dinabando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchena Gorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshri Prishubhana Sutta Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakapa Trubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyevacha Patitanam Bhavanevyo Vaishnavevyo Namon Maha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Pranitananda Shadwaiti Gadadhar Shivasati Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Onamo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Onamo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 9, Chapter 2, The Dynasties of the Sons of Manu, text number 15, which has no purport. Okay, most of these verses have no purport. Some purport. Okay. We'll read the purport. We'll read the some Sanskrit with the purport. Translation. Being reluctant to accept material enjoyment, Manu's younger son, whose name was Kavi, gave up the kingdom before attaining full youth. Accompanied by his friends, he went to the forest, always thinking of the self-effulgent Supreme Personality of Godhead within the core of his heart. Thus he attained perfection. From Karusha, another son of Manu, came the Karusha dynasty, a family of Kshatriyas. The Karusha Kshatriyas were the kings of the northern direction. They were celebrated protectors of Brahminical culture and were all firmly religious. Text 17. From the son of Manu named Drishta came a Kshatriya class called Darshta, whose, family, whose members achieved the position of Brahmanas in this world. Then from the son of Manu named Nriga came Sumati, from Sumati came Bhuta Jyoti, and from Bhuta Jyoti came Vasu. Purport, here the, it is said, Shatram Brahma Bhuyam Gatam Shitao. Although the Darshtas belong to the Kshatri caste, they are able to convert themselves into Brahmanas. This gives clear indication supporting the following statement by Narada Muni. Yasya yalok lakshanam proktam pumsam varna vivyam janakam yat anyatra pidrishtyeta tattanaiva nidir nishet. The qualities of one group were found in the men of another. Those men should be re re recognized by their qualities, by their symptoms, and not by the caste of the family in which they were born. Birth is not at all important. It is one's qualities that are stressed in all Vedic literature. Text 18. The son of Vasu was Patika, whose son was Ogavan. Ogavan's son was known as Ogavan, and his daughter was Ogavati. Sudarshana married that daughter. So who is the son of Pasu? That was not very important. From Narishanta came a son named Chitrasena, from him a son named Riksha, from Riksha became Midvan, from Midvan came Purna, 
and from Purna came Indrasena. So everyone remembers all these things. <laughs> Goes on. In case you got it all down, we will add a little extra. From Indrasena came Viti Hotra, from Viti Hotra came Satyashrava, from Satyashrava came the son named Ugrashrava, and from Ugrashrava came Devadatta. From Devadatta came a son known as Agnivesha, who was the five guard Agni himself. <coughs> this son, was, who was a celebrated saint, was known as Kanina and Jatu Karna. Purport. Agnivesha was also known as Kanina and Jatu Karna. O king from Agnivesha came a Brahminical dynasty known as Agnivesha, Agnivesha, and from now that I have described the descendants of Narishanta, let me describe the descendants of Dishta. Please hear from me. So we'll read one of this verse. Actually, we can. I'll say a little bit, and then we'll finish the chapter. And if you can remember one name, you're doing quite well. <laughs> Nabago Dishta Putronya. Nabago Dishta Putronya. Karmana Vaishyatam Gata. Karmana Vaishyatam Gata. Balandana Sutastasya. Vatsa Pritir Balandana Navago Dishta Putro Nya Karmana Vaishatam Gata Balandana Sutastasya Vatsa Pritir Balandana Karmana Vaishitam Gata Anasitastasya Vatsa Pritir Balandana Navago Dishta Putronya Ladies, Navago Dita Putronya Karmana Vaishitam Gata Alandana Sutastasya Vatsa Pritir Balandana Nabaha Nabaga by the name of Nabaga, Dishta Putra, the son of Dishta, Anya, <coughs> another, Karmana, by occupation, Vaishatam, the order of the Vaishas, Gataha, achieved, Valandana, by the name Valandana, Sutta, son, Tasya, of him, Nabaga, Vatsapriti, by the name of Vatsapriti, Valandana, from Valandana, and it goes on. Translation, Dishta had a son by the name of Nabaga. This Nabaga, who was different from the Nabaga, described later, became a Vaishya by occupational duty. The son of Nabaga was known as Balandana, 
the son of Balandana was Vatsapriti, one who loves the calves. And his son was Pran, Pranishu. This Pramushu's son was Pramati. From Pramati's son was Kanitra. Kanitra's son was Chakshusha. And his son was Vivangsati. I don't think Shukadeva Goswami could have made this up. <laughs> I don't think anyone could ever come up with so many names like this. Purport. Pramana, one son became a Kshatriya, another Brahman, and another a Vaisha. This confirms the statement by Narada Muni, Yasya yal lakshana proktam pumso varna vyangjakam. One should always remember that Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, and Vaishyas should never be regarded as members of a caste by birth. Brahman may be changed into a Kshatriya and a Kshatriya into a Brahmana. Similarly, a Brahmana or a Kshatriya may be changed into a Vaishya and a Vaishya into a Brahmana or a Kshatriya. This is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. Chatur Vanyamaya Shristam Guna Karma Vibhagashaha. So one is a Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaisha, never by birth but by quality. There is a great mood, the great need of Brahmanas. Therefore, in the Krishna consciousness movement, we are trying to train some Brahmanas to guide human society. Because at present, there is a scarcity of Brahmanas. The brain of human society is lost. Because practically everyone is Shudra. No one is at the present moment can guide the members of society to the proper path by which to achieve perfection in life. Mahong Vishnu Braya Krishna Prasthai Bhutte Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tanamane Namaste Saraswatam Deve Gauravani Vacharne Namaste Sakshinivadi Pasca Jade Satarne Bhagavad Gita Krishna says, The Tarasti Prativyam Va Divide Vesha Va Punak Satvam Prakriti Jar Gunai Yadabik Satri Bir Gunai There is no being existing either here nor on the higher planetary systems which is three, free from these three modes of material natures. Brahmana, Kshatriya, Visham, Shudranam, Chaparantapa, Karmani, Prabhavaktani, Prabhava, Pravanayarganai. Brahmana, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, and Shudras, and sh we just didn't mention Shudras. Brahmana, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, and Shudras are distinguished by the qualities born of their own natures in accordance with the material modes or chastisers of the enemy. So in other words, everyone has taken birth in a body, which is machine, but the machine has different types of machines. It's not all one machine. And therefore, some bodies have certain qualities and other bodies have other qualities. But the soul within, the driver or the passenger, doesn't really matter what body he gets, doesn't change. But if we imagine ourselves to be in a body which is actually is something different from reality, then we don't know how to utilize it. One may imagine that a Volkswagen is a sports car, and one may compete against a Jaguar or whatever other sports car it is with your Volkswagen. And you may wonder why this car doesn't run as fast as you think it should, but because it's a Volkswagen, it's only going to run at a certain speed. It doesn't matter what you do. Similarly, when we get a body, rather than finding out what kind of body we have and then running it appropriately, uh, most people are dissatisfied with the body they have, and they want to imagine it's some other body. And therefore, instead of doing finding out how to pro appropriately utilize their body, they're just misusing it in so many different ways. Because Natebidu Swartakatim Hivishnu, people don't know that the goal of life is to become conscious of Krishna. 
they don't understand that there, in any body in the material world, from the highest planet down to the lowest, there's going to be good part, good aspects, good qualities, and problems. And although the problems certainly decrease when one goes upward to the higher planetary systems, but in compared to eternal time, it's all very un unpleasant. Because even Brahma, who lives for 311 trillion years, only lives for the exhalation of Mahavishnu, which to us is a fantastic time, but in the spiritual world, people are breathing all the time. There's a lot of breaths in every day. And although when they think he's Brahma for a very for a long period of time, but actually time goes very quickly on the higher planetary systems. Because when you're having a good time, time goes even quicker. And when you're suffering, like when the, the dentist puts on the drill, and suddenly that one minute you're between the union between the drill and your teeth seems like eternity. And if you're working in a job that has a weekend, the five days during the week seem to go on for years, and the two days that you get vacation seem to last for a few seconds. So time is relative, because, but because we're eternal, actually anything else except for eternal existence will never satisfy us. Because no matter what body we get, we'll be in anxiety that we have to leave, we have to leave the body. The body's going to disappear soon, and we have to go to some other unknown place. So even the demons were saying in, in, in Krishna's pastimes that when they were talking about telling Kangsa he shouldn't be afraid of Krishna. Although Yogamaya had appeared and said that the eighth child of Devaki was actually going to appear to kill him. So the demon said, don't worry, you know, don't worry about anything. We'll take care of it. And the demigods, no matter what atrocities we do, because they were planning to kill all the Brahmins, kill all the cows, kill all the saintly people, not exactly what you expect in a, you know, a civilized gentleman society. So Kongsa may have had a little doubts about doing that, but he said, don't worry, the demigods, they can't do anything because Brahma's in some forest somewhere meditating because he's afraid he's going to die soon. After all, Brahma has approached his, his middle age he now only has 150 trillion something years left in his lifetime. And he's worried. The first gray hairs have appeared and now he knows it's almost over. So what to speak of ourselves, that this idea that this body we have to live to the fullest because we have a long lifetime and we have to make the best out of it. We have to make all the arrangements. And therefore, everyone is trying to figure out how to get ahead in life, how to progress. How, if you were born in a log cabin in, in America, that one day you'll become the president of the United States. All 320 million people are wondering when they're going to become the president of the United States. <laughs> And no one's happy, it doesn't matter who they are. As Prabhupada once said, when he was in Japan with Dai Nippon, he was negotiating some book sales, well, some purchasing, especially the Krishna book being printed there, and other books. Then Dai Nippon, being a Japanese co company, all their executive came to meet with Prabhupada. And one after one, Every executive put down his card on top of the other one to show their seniority. Until finally the top card was the head of the whole company. Probably did some negotiations. No, no. Negotiations. What is the word? Negotiations. Negotiations. With them. 
And uh, they settle on a prize for printing the books. And the end, all the executive walked out, all the executives walked out, and there was one junior executive left, and Prabhupada was talking to him. He said, what is your goal in life? Prabhupada asked the junior executive. So he took his card from the bottom, and then he put it on the top. That's what he was, that's his goal of life, to get his card from the bottom to the top. And more or less, we may think, well, this is, this is silly, but even on the internet, they have these games where they, I haven't played any of them, I have to confess, but I've seen them in the, in the advertisements, where they give, you, they give you a score. And people spend the whole day to get a better score. They don't get anything. I don't think they get anything. They get a virtual prize. They get a virtual trophy. They can virtually show to everyone if you have an internet connection. <laughs> but they'll spend their whole life for it. And they feel like they've accomplished something. My avatar, I guess, is that what they call these things? You have an avatar? My avatar is, has won. <laughs> I'm sitting in the same broken down house without any you know, water, nothing to eat. I feel good because my avatar won. I've lost. I'm a loser. But my avatar, okay. <laughs> so similarly, this body is just an avatar. We're not the body. We're simply the passenger. But somehow or another, we take great pleasure when our body is glorified, when our ideas are glorified, which don't come from us either. And we're quite depressed if our body is attacked or if there's some diff inconvenience to our body, but it has nothing to do with ourselves because we're not the body. But because we're absorbed in this Bali concept of life, we think that one Bali situation is superior to another and we work hard to avoid the bad situations and to get all the good situations. And in the end, we don't think about Krishna. And therefore, we have to come back and go, go through the same problems again and again and again, the same Struggle wherever we are. We may start as a demigod, and then we start. I, I'm only on Indra Loka. I got to get to Mahaloka. What to do? Hook a crook. I'm going to get there. Bribe some of the people there. Maybe they'll give me. So the same struggle to get higher, to protect whatever I have, and the same struggle to get in a, into a better position. Uh, those who are in ignorance, they're struggling to protect what they have, and those in passion, they're struggling to get more than they have. And those in goodness, no one's really in goodness in the material world, but they're struggling less, <laughs> that's all, than others. <laughs> Trying to enjoy what they have, and not so much attached whether they lose it or if they get more just trying to enjoy whatever they have. But the actual aim is to become conscious of Krishna, otherwise one is simply wasting time. And whatever body we have, stane sita shuti katam tanu vangmano bira, chaitanya mabru has confirmed what Lord Brahma said, we should just stay in our own position, whatever it may be. At the same time, we should take shelter of the Vedas to tell us what, how to utilize our body, mind, and words in Krishna's service. And then Krishna will reveal himself to us and we'll become happy eternally in a loving relation with Krishna and his devotees. And we won't have anything else to hanker or lament about. And if we don't do that, then we'll just struggle in this body endlessly, in this body, the next body, one after that, in 8,400,000 species of life, looking for what we can find in this lifetime by just chanting Hare Krishna without offense. Therefore, it's stressed here, as in other parts of the Bhagavad Gita, that we should know what body we have. And do we actually have a body which is Samadama Tapa Socham Shanti Arjam Evacha, Jnana Vijnana Mastikyam Brahma Karma Sabhavacham? Do we actually have a body which is our minds are peaceful, our senses are controlled? We're tolerant, we're truthful, we're actually religious all the time. 
Do we actually, is that our mode of nature? Or is our body, uh, what is it? Kshatriya. Soryam teja driti daksha yude chapi palayanam dhanam ishvara bhavas cha shatram karma svabhavajam. Surya, heroic. Now most of us, if someone shoots a, a pin into us, we, we fall down and cry. <laughs> We're probably not prepared to face battle with actual weapons. We can hardly defend ourselves with words. So she throws a word at her, oh, I can't take that. Oh, not another one. <laughs> this is too much. I surrender. But Surya Tejas, power, how much power do we have? Maybe we could put up a good fight against some ants. Ah, watch out, ants, you know, I'm a warrior. <laughs> Most people, the only power they have is, you know, playing the video game. Their thumbs have become very powerful. <laughs> they kill all the dragons in all the dungeons. Surya Teja Driti, uh, determination. Surya Teja Driti Daksha, ability, talent, expertise. Yude Chapi and courage in battle. Dhanam, generosity. Charity, Ishvara, and the ability to control others. These are the qualities of the Kshatriya. So who actually is going to develop these qualities of a, a real Kshatriya? Maybe you can learn the martial arts and get your teeth knocked out by someone else. But that being a, fighting with others is not the only quality of a Kshatriya. <laughs> you also have to become generous and you have to become determined, expert, so many different things, heroic. Not just fighting, street fighting. That's not doesn't make a kshatriya. Protecting the Brahmins, etc. And the Vaishas, Krishi Gorakshavani Jam, Vaisha Karma Swabhavajam. Even where are the Vaishas? Who's protecting the cows nowadays? Who even wants to protect a cow? Sometimes we have cow protection in Iskan and there's three, three, two or three devotees protecting the cows, and there's 200 Indians giving donations to protect the poor cow. <laughs> there's no question of self-sufficiency. They're, they're just a show. We're putting on a show of cow protection, gain some sympathy. But actually, the cows are supposed to support the, the, the people they're supposed to be the basis of economic development. Not that we take pity on the cows and we give donations to support these poor cows. <laughs> cows is, it would, the, the cows are supposed to be the basis of supporting us. So now the cows are dependent on people making money through industry and technology so they can get some feed. <laughs> and we get a little meal, milk from them we declare that we're protecting the cow. And as far as the bull, no one wants to work the bull. Maybe one or two people in, in this wants to work. It's too hard work. We can use the time going out and co getting collections. <laughs> and the bull, we can just, well, whatever. What could he do? Because generally the idea is that if you, do, if you go to the store, you can buy a tomato this big for one euro. And if you work all day long in the fields, you only get a few tomatoes really small. 
So why should I bother working so hard? I just somehow or another bag a euro and get this huge thing called a tomato. And even if I can't eat it, at least I can play soccer with it. <laughs> but this is actually not. If there are actually persons who could actually maintain the cows and till the land, ultimately that will be really valuable, that quality. And as far as protecting or whatever, Prabhupada wanted, as he says here, he wanted to create Brahmins because they have some brains. They could see things as they actually are and don't think all this, they can see through all this false advertisement and glorification of how wonderful everything is. All this idea that we're living in a very advanced civilization, you know, everything we do is perfect. Anyone who doesn't think we're perfect, they're, they're demons and they should be put in jail. Or <laughs> Anyone who dares criticize what any of the leaders do is obviously a misleader. So we got to, whatever. Ayurvedic literature, talking about cow protection, talking about protecting children and women, protecting the old people. This is actually scandalous that you have such barbaric ideas. All these people should voluntarily sacrifice their lives for the good of Mother Earth so we don't get so much carbon dioxide. I caught you, you're breathing, you're bre stop breathing. <laughs> you're destroying the planet. <laughs> so we should, we're doing you a favor by eliminating all of you, by all these rules and regulations we come up with. And if we starve you to death, whatever, then you should be proud of it. <laughs> You're doing a favor because Mother Earth will survive. <laughs> Mother Earth and we ourselves who are here to, to maintain everything, who have actually understood that all religion is false. The only thing real is that there's a few people who control everything. They're the chosen people because by manipulation, they're able to cheat everything, everyone else out of their wealth. They were able to rob everyone's intelligence, Therefore, they're the chosen people, and they're the only people who deserve to live and survive. Of course, eventually, if that was true, then they'd just fight with each other till the last man was there or the last woman. So the point is that everyone should fight. When the actual part purpose is not to lord it over everyone else. One is given a higher position in society in the Veda culture according to one's ability to serve others, not to exploit them. The Brahmins have the least tendency to exploit, and even the Kshatriyas, although they seem to sometimes live in great opulence, but ultimately that opulence was not meant for their sense gratification. It was meant to glorify the position of the Brahmins. And the Vaishyas were meant to protect the cows and other living entities too. The Kshatriyas were meant to protect the Brahmins and the Vaishyas and the Shudras, and therefore they were given some facility to do that. And similarly, the Vaishyas were supposed to protect all the other living entities, and the Shudras were supposed to assist in that protection, not in the exploitation. And therefore the society could live harmoniously, because everyone had the same interest to advance in Krishna consciousness. But now people don't know that the purpose of society to advance in Krishna consciousness and therefore everyone by some collection of artificial resources, namely artificial means of ec economy, are trying to exploit. Because the lust has become the primary focus of people's activities, but that leads to greed, to anger, to delusion, and therefore people are misdirected and simply causing problems for themselves and everyone else, creating horrible, unbeneficial works meant to destroy the world. So if we don't accept Krishna, we don't accept his system, we don't accept our position in that system and try to utilize it to become Krishna conscious, then the result is that we'll simply find ourselves in the presence of civil situation where so many people are creating horrible, horrible unbeneficial works which will ultimately cause destruction to themselves and others. 
So with that happy note, I'll stop there. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for the class. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for the class. Uh, do we really need to remember all these names uh, that are uh, in the in the Bhavatan uh, for our uh, spiritual benefit? Well, if you become Shukadeva Goswami in your next lifetime, <laughs> then you have to remember all these names. Otherwise, how are you going to tell them to Priksha Maharaj? In the meantime, we try to remember the Hare Krishna mantra. <laughs> Maybe a few others, like, you know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Gornitai, Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasudhi Gorvakt. We can remember those names that were doing good. Another thing, Guru Maharaj, uh, you mentioned about cow protection, and uh, I have the experience. I went to a few farms uh, in Iskon, and most of the cows that, that we protect are cows that we purchase to save them from slaughter. And most of the cows are not giving milk, only are purely for protection. So what's your opinion about that? At least we're doing something. <laughs> yeah, Because you mentioned about uh, the cows should be the... the, the um, well, obviously the, the cows are meant to be productive. Yeah. Krishna didn't just have cows and, you know, went around, show that he was protecting them. He actually got milk. He would go, per personally go out and milk them. And when they had prashadam, they were, they were, there are no vegans in the spiritual world. So everyone eats milk products there, a lot of them. And they don't get sick, but they don't exploit the cow either, all the cows. Their are barns in, in uh, Nandagram in the spiritual world are more opulent than Indra's, in, than the palaces in Indra Loka. They take good care of the cows there. But anyhow, we're, we're obviously we haven't established fully our farms, but that's part of the plan in the future. Either will those eventually will be forced to do that. Also, I noticed that, for example, in New Govardhan in in, in Australia. Um, a few devotees got disappointed because the government enforced this uh, system that the devotees should uh, implement the machine to milk the cows. They used to milk the cows by hand, but the government uh, interfered and they, they want to, the devotees to use the machine, so the many devotees got disappointed with that. Anyhow, what to do? We're, yeah. we're living in a, such a civilization. Mm. But these things are only temporary. Kangsa was seemed to be doing quite well for a while. It conquered the Boja dynasty, the Andaka dynasty, Vishni dynasty. He was doing quite well. He expanded his influence all over the, the world, the big world at that time. But ultimately got cut down by Krishna and his representatives. Okay, yes. You mentioned, Maharaj, about that uh, junior executive who wanted to um, to become a senior executive, to become yes. the chief. And um, um, it's like uh, we see that this happens in the material life, and we say that this is not a, a proper behavior or someone we should see the, that the goal is Krishna. But we also see uh, among devotees that they want higher position and they uh, chase higher position. And also about um, this society that they don't, uh, people don't want to do the hard work in the, in, the, in the modern society. They don't want to protect the cows, they don't want to do the hard work, but we also see among devotees that they don't want to do that. No. So what is our, ex how can we have expectations from karmis when not even us have managed among devotees to implement these but things. Devo devotees, the spiritual world where there are devotees. No, in, in this world. Well, in the here we're aspiring to become devotees. Aspiring devotees. So <laughs> not even aspiring devotees have managed to implement these things. So how can we have expectations from the karmis? You can't expect. 
but we do have because well why should you expect if we can if we're not doing it why should we expect anyone else to do it I see this in, in all sorts of lectures that karmis are criticized because they want higher positions because they don't protect the cows, but not even the devotees do it. So why aren't, aren't we looking in our own garden first? Well, I'm not speaking to the karmis. <laughs> I'm speaking to the devotees here. I don't think most of it, I don't think my, my lectures or anyone else's lectures go very far outside. But anyhow, lectures is one thing. Giving knowledge is one thing giving a perspective how to see things properly and then seeing how that we can apply that within our lo own lives with some kind of conviction and determination. So some preaching has to be there, some purification. So what do we expect? We expect the power of the holy name, the power of the philosophy eventually to have some effect if we use our intelligence, that it won't all go in vain. Eventually some little seed will drop into the ground and we'll get some plants may take a little time. We can't be so short-sighted. We're coming from abominable backgrounds. It's not that we were all saintly persons and we can't understand why we came into this movement and it didn't flourish with all kinds of good qualities. Well, we're just struggling gradually to get a little out of the mode of ignorance, maybe enter into the mode of passion, go from there, make a little progress. And then in the future we may see some actual manifestations of the philosophy. More matter, we're already seeing that. I mean, we're not cow protecting the cows, but right now there is Harinam, there's book distribution, there's preaching. We're doing mostly Brahminical activities or transcendental activities, so that should be appreciated. And you know, we're not starving in spite of the fact that we're not protecting the cow. So we can go on with our spiritual activities. But eventually these other things will be shown to be important also but they're not emphasized now because the most important thing is to go with the preaching and expand the Hare Krishna movement. Is that right? Um, I, I don't know because compared to what it was like 50 years ago, it seems that it's decreasing the movement, not increased. Then it was expanding. Are you more Krishna conscious than you were before? Sorry? Are you more Krishna conscious than I you I don't were? know. What's that? I don't know. Do you know anyone who's become more Krishna conscious? I think everybody should know for himself. I, but, cannot, I cannot read their minds to know if they think of Krishna all well, the time. Do you find people still chanting Hare Krishna, <laughs> devotees chanting Hare Krishna? Yes. Are they still reading Prabhupada's books? I don't know. You don't know if anyone's worried? I anything. know of some, but I don't know of everyone. I know. We don't, we're not talking about anyone. We're just, we're, those who are here are hearing, we're hearing Prabhupada's books. Are we taking prasadam at least? Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not doing so bad. These are all spiritual activities. We're worshiping the deities. Things are going on. As far as what, what everyone else should do, that we have a little control over. What we should do, that we have control over. Yeah, that was my question. Why do we have expectations from others and not from ourselves first? <laughs> well, why do you not have expectations for others? I don't. You? I learned not to. <laughs> okay, so then there's no problem for you. <laughs> I, I, I only have expectation if they preach to me something. I have the expectation that they follow what they preach. Why? Because they have the expectation of me to listen to them. So if they want me to listen to them, then I have the expectation to well, see an example. Why Sorry? Should you, why should you listen to them if you don't think they're worthy to be listened to? Well, that's the point. I, I'm trying, if, if they follow what they preach, then I consider them worthy to be listened to. So Otherwise, don't listen to them if you're not, don't, I mean, no one's, usually you're not being forced to, be, to, to listen to someone. Sometimes we are. Okay, so then you've got to listen to them because you're being forced. <laughs> that's a reason to listen to them. But generally, voluntarily, you, you don't have to listen to them. Make your own advancement in Krishna consciousness and try to find out others who may help you by having a good example or it can give you some insight in how to do it. And don't worry about the rest. Because you're just wa wasting your time worrying about them. Look for what you can influence yourself mainly and don't worry about what, what you're concerned, the other things that you, outside that you may be concerned about but you can't do anything about. The spiritual world is open to everyone. 
it's not only open to the people who worry about everyone else. It's open for those who are worrying about wor how they're going to get there. Anything else? Hello. Krishna Maharaj, there are some questions from the internet audience. Avadutarai Prabhu. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Vishwanath writes that Ajamil becomes free from all karma already at his first time uttering the holy name. By the names uttered after the first uttered. Uttered. Yeah, thank you. Uttered. Uttered after the first, his bhakti was cultivated. Question why the same does not happen to us? It does. <laughs> But it's, you know, it's compared, it's compared to just like uh, at the stage of sadhana bhakti, or even before that. Well, let's take sadhana bhakti. Devotional service or bhakti is very localized. And generally, everything else is generally we're in, in illusory energy. But chanting Hare Krishna once in a while, we, we're, we get a little bhakti. So he, he chanted Hare Krishna, he got a little bhakti, which is good. But the rest of his life was abominable. And after he chanted a couple of times or more, he just added to it. But it's a little speck compared to... I mean, just look at our lives. We're here, we're, we're chanting. Sometimes we may be in ecstasy. Sometimes we remember Krishna. We get insights. And then we walk out and we're just like covered over, you know. <laughs> Back in the world. <laughs> worrying about everything, you know. What did they say and why did they look at me like that? So, many, so we're in the same position. We're just... We're better than Ajamil. We have a more fortunate position in one sense because we have a little more practice. But he needed a little bit of practice, that's all. He started his life. He got a little constant, a little place where he had a little bhakti when he was chanting to his son. And ultimately it, it grew, especially when he was in difficulty. Then it expanded very quickly. So he's not, it's all the same process. And then the second question is in the commentary of Vishwanath on Bhagavad Gita, 6th chapter, 32 verse, verse 32, there is a question how the yogi sees with the equal vision the happiness and distress of both pious and impious people as one's own. The pious and no, impious. No, no, wait a second, wait a second. What is this? Bhagavad uh, Gita? Yes, the 6th uh, chapter. Yeah, yeah. Atmo Padmiena Sarvatra Saman Pachati Yorjana Sukam Vadi Vadu Kam Su Yogi Paramomotha. He's a true yogi who sees equally both the happiness and stress of all living entities, all Arjuna. Means that basically speaking, he knows that the soul is not, he's being put into a position of happiness to encourage him to become more pious, and he's put in a position of distress as a result of his sinful activities to encourage him to become less impious. So both ways, material nature is working to bring the soul back to the spiritual world. He knows it's all a learning process. Because then he continues, the pious and impious are happy and distressed for completely different things. So, Anyhow, whatever, yes. If you perform sinful activities, either now or in the past, you've suffered distress. But that's meant to stop your sinful activities, so you become, why am I suffering? And when you put in a good position, then you think, why am I happy? What should I do with this? What is, how did I become happy and what should I do to become happier? Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. Thank you very much. Grantaraj Shemad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gaur Pramananda. His Holiness Pradhananda Swami Maharaj Ki.